thanks again for tuning back into the channel. Although the title on the thumbnail says fine art, it's fine art watercolour. We're going to use one of many techniques to change your existing photographs and give them that watercolour effect. Now there is many videos online to learn how to do this, so this is just another one thrown into the big pot that is YouTube. But I do hope you get something from this. And if you hang on to the end of the video or just jump straight towards the end, I think it's in about 16 minutes, you will see other images that have been created using a similar technique. Now it's not exactly the same technique because there are so many different ways of doing it. Let's dive right in. Right, so we're going to go through the process of creating this as a watercolour image. So the first thing that we're going to do is we could either go in here, which is edit in quick mask mode, or we can go up into select and edit in quick mask mode. It's entirely up to you how you do this. To be aware that it's in quick mask mode, you'll notice that the layer is highlighted in red. Next step to this process is going to edit, fill, and we have different fill options here. We've got foreground, background, colour, pattern, black, 50% green, white. We're going to use colour. And what we're going to do is we're going to work in the HSB, the hue, saturation and brightness. The hue is to be zero. Saturation is to be zero. And we only want a subtle effect with the watercolour. So we're going to leave this at 20 and it was already defaulted there to 20 because I've been running through this entire process. But sometimes it will be up at 50 and you can change that. The more, the higher you increase the number, the more of the effect, the more abstract effect you will get from this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 20 at the moment and I'm just going to click OK. Once I've got that, I'm going to click OK here and you'll notice that the entire document highlights in red now that means the entire document is selected but i don't want to see the red so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select and i'm going to turn off edit in quick mask mode the document however is still selected although you can't even see the marching ants the next thing to do is go into your generative fill and type in watercolor and then click generate and from this, because it's selected, Photoshop will generate a watercolour rendition of the image that you have put in. So now we have this and we can go in and we can test what one we prefer. And go to that one, that one or that one. For now, I'm going to leave this at the default. So I'm going to delete these two here. And that's the one that's given me. It's okay, it's not the best, but it will work with what I'm about to do. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the layer blend mode here. And we're just going to cycle through this to see what one we want best. Now you can go through this, I'll go through it relatively quickly. You can go through this at your own pace to find out what one works best for your images. Now overlay for me is too dark, soft light, Again, it's too dark, but remember we can always turn down the opacity. I quite like the lighting. So I'm going to choose lighting, and then I'm also going to turn down the opacity. And what will happen with the opacity turned down is the actual, if I to flick this on and off, you'll see the photograph, then the watercolour effect. Now you have to be careful with this because if you're going to print this at a later date, it will look like a photograph that has been modified in Photoshop. And it's as simple as that. So you've got to go for the effect that you want. Right now, we're going to work with individual layers, building up textures to this. So by the end of this, or hopefully by the end of this, you will get the result that we're after. For now, I am going to leave it around 87%. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a texture into this because we're going to be building it up with textures to help emphasise the watercolour effect. Now, you can bring in any texture at all. For this image, for the previous image that you saw the first time I did it, I used buildings. For this image, 
I'm going to use trees. And this is going to build up the texture. Now you can see it in there. If I turn that layer off, you can see the trees that I'm going to be using. So I need to stretch these to fill the canvas. And it's simply Control or Command and T. And just hold down Shift and drag it out. So now that we've stretched that, we need to go in and find out what blending mode works best. Again, run through them to see what ones you think. Overlay, soft light, it's entirely up to you. Now, because we are going to be creating a painterly effect in this, I quite like that, but I don't like the trees at the top because straight away I automatically see it is trees. So what I'm going to do, rasterize the layer, and then I'm going to go edit, transform, flip vertical. So we now have the trees down here, but do you notice the effect it has down here with it? So then I can go back in and I can look at a different blending mode. Overlay. That works okay. Soft light works okay. And again, turn down the opacity of it. Put that back on. And again, turn down the opacity of that one. Every time we do this, we may require to change the blending modes. There's not a set path for this to get it to work the way that you want. So there's screen. I quite like screen. So as you can see, how it all changes as you build up the layers. So I'm going to leave it now at screen. Now, there is no set order in how you create this. I just tend to work when I'm doing it and leave the watercolour effect at the top. But there is no set order in how you build your image up. It's just whatever comes to you creatively. The next thing I am going to do is I'm going to add more of a watercolour effect to this. So, above this layer, but it may change, I am going to bring in this which is a simple watercolour painting. And again, I'm going to stretch it by holding down shift and just stretch it up. Now, each time you do this, it may or may not work. That's the good thing about this. You never know how it is going to pan out when you create these. Straight away, rasterize. And let's go into blending modes. Now, as you can see, how much that's affecting that overlay. Overlay is actually quite nice, but you notice I've lost some of the sky, so I can either mask that and bring it in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask it and I'm going to take some of it out here. I don't want to take out too much because I quite like the painterly effect. So with a normal brush, I'll just go in here and I'll take the first brush in the general brushes. I'm going to turn the opacity down just to about 12, 13, and I'm going to turn the flow down as well and take the size down and just paint out some of the areas. Now you'll notice with the mask, it's hardly affecting it. Overall, it will affect it. The more I paint, the more it will affect it. But I quite like the tonality that's coming through here. I'm also going to be adding to this each and every time. I maybe take out some of the trees there just in that area there. I might even paint out some of this to bring some of the texture back in the sky. And you'll notice it is very subtle. I'm having to paint quite a lot, and that's because I have the opacity down and the flow turned down. I want it just to be a gradual build up. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add yet another texture to this. And this time I'm going to add a vintage paper texture. Just drag that and drop it on there. Quite a warm tone to this one. I uh, scale it up slightly, but I want it to fit the paper, so I'm going to stretch it by holding down shift, drag it out to the side, out to that side, up there, and then there, and click OK. Again, I'm going to rasterize. And the reason I'm rasterizing is because I don't really want to go back and edit these. I'm trying to do it as loosely and as creatively as it feels is the best way of putting it. Uh, I don't want to go back and edit them. If I make a mistake, I'll go back and delete it. But having ra layers that are smart objects allows you to go back and edit it anyway. 
So I'm now going to look for a blend mode here. Let's go for screen, overlay, quite nice with overlay, soft light, quite nice with hard light as well. So it's just a case of deciding what one you want for this. And as you can see, it's got quite a warm tone to it. I can change that tone quite easily. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to select the layer, shift, control, and U removes all the saturation from it. So then I can go in and go screen overlay. Quite nice. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it at that. If I turn that on and off, you will notice the difference. Let's add another layer into this and let's make it a watercolour effect for this. So let's just, we're going to try to, let's drop that one in. Holding down shift, scale it. Scale it out there and just take it beyond ever so slightly each time. And rasterize. So you get the process that we're going through here. And then it's just finding one that works with it. That's actually quite nice. And that's multiply, so that's darkening. Screen will be too light and overlay, yeah, just too much. That's quite a rustic effect in there as well. So you get the idea. You can choose whatever ones. I'm going to use multiply and I'm also going to turn the opacity down. Just about there. So we started with this. We've put in one, two, three, four, five layers, including the watercolor layer. And we ended up with that. So you can see how relatively quickly and easily you can gain that effect with it. So I'm quite happy with that. I can add more effects to it. I'll just add a couple at the very end. I'm quite happy with the final effect here. So what I'm going to do to ensure that I've not overstretched anything beyond the visual boundary of this, I'm going to take the crop tool, make ensure that delete cropped pixels is selected and double click. And what that does is if there's any information outside our visual window, it will be chopped off and it will disappear so it won't be taking up any document space. Next thing I'm going to do is image, canvas size. I'm going to change this to inches. And from the center out, it means it will add this relative to this from the center out. So I am going to put four inches in here, four inches in here. Canvas extension color is white. And I've ensured that I have the background layer enabled. Click OK. So I'll just centre that and zoom it out slightly. And if I press F in my keyboard twice, you'll see that I've put a border in there. I'll zoom in just once. So you can see that that is the final image that we have now. Quite painterly, watercolour taken from your own original photograph and just given a new lease of life. We can take it further and add a couple more effects. I'll do that very quickly. So I just press escape. On a new layer above this one, blank layer, I'm going to get into my brushes. Now you'll notice that I've got lots of drop down brushes here and I've got dirt brushes. Uh, paint splash brushes. These can all be found in brusheasy.com. But just to show you how to add extra effects to it, let's just take that one and then I'll ensure the colour is white. I'm on my own new blank layer and just paint once. And you see nothing happens. And the reason for that is we still have the brush and the opacity and the flow down. So if I now paint we get that random effect there. I can go down here, but what you have to watch with your brushes is that you don't have any straight edges at the edge of them. So I could do that as well. I could put that in there. Doesn't look so nice coming over the boat. To rotate your brushes, use the arrows on your keyboard and they will rotate your brushes. So I could get in there and put some in there. Perhaps I'm going to rotate it again. I'm just sticking to the same one each time. 
and I'll put that in there. And I'm going to leave it at that because that's the basic process of creating these. One final thing, if you're going to be doing these quite often, it's a good idea to create an action that will do it all for you. And that won't add the layers in, unless you're using the same layers each time, but it will create the watercolour, generate watercolour. And you can set that up quite easy, so that every time you bring in an image, in here, gen watercolour, generate watercolour, Play. So there you go, each time it creates it for me. So I can drop in many images and just hit play and it saves me going through that entire process. It's the same for increasing the canvas width as well. You can just create an action for it. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it just lets you see how quite simply you can create these. Yes, we did use AI to manipulate the watercolour effect and the reason I chose AI to create it is because it's a randomised effect and I like that. I like being out of control when it comes to that but I also like being in control when it comes to the finalisation of the image. Thanks again for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video.